In this episode, I'm going to talk about what I encountered lately during a photo shoot, about how you encourage yourself to move forward when you get stuck. It's a self-portrait photo shoot. So basically, I, I have the say to say, I want to carry on to do it or I want to stop because I'm not ready. I have the say because there is no one else involved. And with in this space, when I got problem, when I have something in my mind, I got stuck. How do I move forward? Because it's easier when there's someone else to collaborate in the shoe. Either your client or your makeup artist or your subject, your model. There's more accountability, let's say that. But if that is the self-portrait with yourself, you have less accountability because you are the only one who has the accountability and you have a say for everything. And in this situation, how do you overcome the thoughts like, I don't want to do it now. Let me do it another day. Maybe it will be better I do it next day. Maybe it will be better I do more research and come back to do it. This is the story about creating my image betrayal. Still, I'm working on this one. Eventually, I will make this, how I create this image, make it into a course so you can see how I create this image. This is not ready yet. You'll have to wait. But I do have other online courses. Before we dive in, I want to let you know that if you're interested in learning more about the techniques I use in my photography, I offer online courses on our website. You can check these courses at portraitcreatives.com slash courses. So this is an episode about how you encourage yourself to move forward when you get stuck. So here it is. I was in the studio last week to create the image I have been preparing for months. The image is called Betrayal. It's a very, very interesting theme and there are loads of elements that I, I can't wait to share with you. But at that time, I planned so many things. My mood board, my styling, my dress are all made. I DIY my own outfits and the hair makeup's all stuff through. Okay. But when I had a studio, I change a few things and I start to see like, oh, I have these combination of colors of outfits and what am I going to do with my backdrop? And I have no idea what backdrop would be the best suitable for that image. So I get a bit stuck and it was like one hour, two hours. I just feel, no, I can't do this because I am not prepared enough, but I have prepared for months. And takes so much time to make the outfits and the props and getting them. And, and I still, when I go into the studio, I feel, no, 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 I can't do this because I'm not prepared enough. I, I'm underprepared. But actually, I was overprepared when I come to look at everything I have done. I got stuck at that moment in my head, like I wasn't prepared enough. I can't do this. I have to get back to the drawing board and get back to work and do some more research. I was there pondering, sitting in front of the computer in my studio and doing nothing, literally just doing nothing. I just stuck. I have my light set up and outfits layout and then the props and then the elements, the things I want to incorporate in the image, I all laid out. I was just stuck. And I start to think like, okay, that's just one thing. So let me try to solve this to see if I can move forward. And I was like pushing myself like, okay, doesn't matter how the outcome will be. I can always redo it again if I'm not happy. So I just determined that moment and say to myself, just do it. Find information right now if, in the computer about the backdrop. And then let's do it. Let's try. If it doesn't work, we do it again. So with that thought of encouragement, I go into my computer and I start to look for complementary color because I got stuck because I start to use different colors of element of the outfit and I couldn't find a complementary in the common ground. 
because backdrop essentially is something to enhance the subject in the photograph. It can't be overwhelming to take over the attention. So I was very scared of using color for this particular image. And I thought, let's go gray, black. It's a bit boring. And then I say, why? It's totally no, no. And I thought, okay, let me just go on internet. My go-to place to find complementary color is Adobe Color. I just went on Google and I typed just Adobe Color. You don't need to have account with Adobe, but it's best you have account with Adobe because they will save your color palettes in the library. So I have already have account with Adobe, so I just sign in. I start to look up the colors of my outfits. There's a method I use to get the right color, to get the precise color for Adobe Color. So I went on Adobe Color and I just type in the color number and then I will start to play with analogous and complementary color, monochromatic, triad, double split, complementary, and all sorts of different things. That's just one set of color. And then I look for the color of another outfit and I look it up the color and complementary color, analogous, split, complementary, square, all sorts of things. So there are all sorts of Color harmony rules, there are quite a lot you can play with. So I start to use all these things and I finally, finally, I found there was one color that it stands out that I can use it to complement all other colors I use in this image. In that moment, and then my mind is clear and it happened to be the color I have a hand-painted backdrop. I paint that backdrop and that has been very useful for so many shoots but I wasn't thinking that would work but actually Adobe Color shows that is the right color to choose so I was very happy to find out that color would work I went on to pull out that backdrop and I find another fabric I have in my studio because after years of photographing people when I go travel I often I just buy fabrics and bring back and so I have a quite a good collection of different color and different type of fabric that I can use for photo shoot so it happened to be like I have all these colors so I was very happy then just set up everything and I start to do the hair makeup and change into my outfit and I start to do the shoot and it was much easier when the problem is solved actually it was easy just went on computer just to look up the color, but I didn't think of that. Like when I was preparing for the image, I was doing massive research, hours of hours of research. I love doing research because it's so interesting. N learning new things is always very interesting for me. And then when I got into studio, I'm in the action mode. And for me, like, oh gosh, something like this question pop. Like, I don't know how to answer it. And like, I what's the color of the backdrop. And I got stuck. But when I changed my mind to encourage myself, just do it and pick a color and maybe trying to solve this problem and uh, what's the worst can happen. Just the photo doesn't come out good and just do it again. And I have a lot of situations like that because uh, there are many, many times I thought, oh, it's a brilliant idea. I know how to do this. Let's go and do it. And so I went to the studio and... I did the photo and everything. I feel oh, this is going to be good. It's going to be fun. Come back to the computer at home and I start to look at this photo and combine them together. Oh, shit. I shouldn't have used that lighting. I shouldn't have done that hair like that. And that looks awful in that way. It's just like everything. I would tear them in pieces. It doesn't matter how good was the idea, how much uh, research I've done for that image. The result just suck and that really discouraged me in a way I feel a little bit disappointed but I know I have to adjust all the element and get back in again trying to shoot and I have the idea like right now but I'm still not sure all the alteration I will do for this image will eventually work but there is no way to find out but executing it 
So that's the next thing I'm going to do in my studio. But anyway, I want to encourage everyone: like when you get stuck, trying to move forward, even you just do a little bit, even you just move one step at a time, like tiny step, just trying to move forward and encourage yourself always. That's what I did, and that's how I managed to finish that shoot and come back home with an image that I feel, oh, this is amazing. I love it, and I can't wait to show you the image. And I can't wait to show everyone the image, and it's a great feeling to have. I hope this is helpful for any creators that are creating their own work, because sometimes I feel we are very easy stuck in our head, and. If we could change our mind to shift our mind to a different space, then we can move forward. If you're interested in diving in deeper into conceptual portrait photography, be sure to check out my online courses on portraitcreatives.com/courses. There are courses about skin retouching and also frequency separation for skin retouching. This is a very, very important skill to have to be able to use frequency separation. It doesn't matter if it's for skin or for other issue. I use it for cleaning backdrops, for cleaning clothes, stains, a lot of other things. I hope the course will help you to gain more knowledge and skill to create your next amazing portrait. So this is the episode today. Thank you for listening. I hope you get some nugget out of it and get encouraged and inspired. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now. Take care.